Hello, Math 2 students. Today we're going to be covering probability and frequency tables. So you see on the right I have a printout of handouts with printed 3 to a page if you prefer to do that. If not, you can just copy what's on the left and then write the comments that I write on the right side. So probability is the chance that something desired will occur. So how do we find that probability? We take the number of desired outcomes, that total, and we divide by the total of every possible outcome available. For example, getting heads on a coin. If we want to find the probability of getting heads on a coin, the, the desired outcome would be getting heads. The total number of possible outcomes or tails and heads, so therefore one out of two. Number two, getting a two on the roll of a die. Well, there is only one two on the die, so that is only one possible desired outcome. How many desired outcomes do we have, or out possible outcomes do we have? You could roll a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six meaning the probability of getting a 2 on a die would be 1, which is our numerator, over 6, because there are 6 possible outcomes. For number 3, the probability of getting a spade and a deck of cards, remember that there are 4 suits in a deck of cards, so you have to know the total number of um, spades in a deck of cards. So we're looking for a spade out of spades, hearts, diamonds, and clubs. Well, how many spades are there? There are 13 spades out of 52 cards in a deck. So the probability of picking a spade is 13 out of 52. For number four, picking a day that starts with the letter S, we have Saturday and Sunday out of all the possible days of the week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and of course Saturday. So the probability of picking a day that starts with an S would be 2 because there are two desired outcomes. Saturday and Sunday both begin with S out of 7 possible outcomes seven days of the week so the probability would be two out of seven for frequency tables we can organize data in columns and in rows so let's take a look at a frequency table and we're going to use that frequency table to find some probability. So this table shows the um, number of males, females, and their ages in a particular class. Let's say that we surveyed the students in our Math 2 class and these were the results. One thing that is missing from the table that will be important for you to include to find probability are the totals. So I'm going to put total up here in my heading to the right and total to the left down below. In order to find probabilities, we need to know the probability or the totals across each row and each column. So that's what I will do. I will now add 9 plus 4 plus 2 to get 15. Then add 10 plus 5 plus 1 to get 16. Now if we total up 15 and 16, we should end up with 31. If we then total the columns for age 15, there were 9 males and 10 females age 15 for a total of 19. 4 males and 5 females of age 16, that's a total of 9, and for other age, 2 plus 1 is 3. So we can, if we want, you can kind of fill out this table, make it look nice. 
All right. Please notice that the totals uh, vertically, 15 and 16 total to 31, as well as horizontally, 19 plus 9 plus 3 should also equal 31. If these numbers do not both total here, you've made a math error somewhere. So if you look at the PowerPoint to the left, what we are now asked is to find the probability of a student in our class being male. To write probability, we use the letter P and then whatever we're trying to find the probability of in parentheses to the right of that. So I will do probability of male. So the probability that one is male, we would find by first understanding how many males total we have. If we look at our male row and go all the way over to the right, we will see that there are 15. So there are 15 out of, and of course we always want to do the total number of students available in the class, which is our total down here in the bottom right corner of our frequency table, 31. The probability that a student in our class was female, we would find by taking the total number of female students, looking over here in our row, there are 16 female students total out of 31 students. Please remember that I do not need you to simplify these fractions also. Next, to find the probability that a student is 15 years old, we want to look at the column of here for here in uh, age 15. So how many students are 15? There are a total, male and female, of 19 female students, or excuse me, 15 year olds. 19 15 year olds. Again, out of the total number of students, 31. The probability of a student being 16 years old would be found by taking the total number of students that are 16. And now I hope you're seeing how important adding in this total column in row R, even if you're not given that. The total number of 16 year olds is 9 out of 31 students. Lastly, the probability of being a 16 year old male so the probability that someone is 16 and a male, we would want to look at our table for that number. So male, age 16, we want to look where the column and the row meet and we see that there are four students that are both 16 and male. So my probability is 4 out of 31. What you will also be asked to do is to construct your own uh, two-way frequency tables. So what we are told in this paragraph is that there are 76 boys and 56 girls on a field trip. 45 of the boys and 32 of the girls are going to Conference A and the rest are going to Conference B. So we have two uh, headings we need to consider. The fact that we have boys and girls. And also that there are two conferences. Conference A and Conference B. So it doesn't matter which you put on the top and which you put on the bottom. This was of my choosing. So if you switch the boys and girls with the conference A and B, that's fine also as long as your numbers could come out the same. And we form boxes. So we first read again the data. There are 76 boys and 56 girls on a field trip. When I read that, that tells me that I have a total of 76 boys. So because of when I read, I, I know that it's a total, I'm going to come down here and write in 76. Please remember also that I told you even without being told you need to be able to write in those total values. So there are 76 boys total and 56 girls on the field trip. Next it says that 45 of the boys and 32 of the girls are going to Conference A. So again 45 boys going to Conference A and 32 girls going to conference A. 
and then it just says the rest are going to conference B. We're going to have to do some deductive reasoning here to determine how many boys and girls each went to conference B. To find this number here, if I'm given the total, I can kind of work backwards here. So if I take the 76 and subtract the 45, I end up with 31. That's how I know that there are 31 boys going to conference B. Now for girls, I know that there are 56 total. I know I'd have to add the number of girls going to conference A and B to get 56, so I'm going to work backward. If I take the total of 56 and subtract the 32, I'll end up with 24. That's how I know I have 24. What I do want you to do when creating a table and having to do this type of math is to circle the numbers that you had to do some type of computation in order to find. Please circle those on a table. Next, we want to go ahead and we don't know the totals, so we need to total this up in order to work with probability. If we add 45 and 32, we get 77 that, have, that are attending conference A. And if we add 31 and 24, we get 55. Finding that total, that's 132. Again, double check that 77 and 55 add up to 132 and 76 and 56 add up to 132. Next, now that we have the uh, two-way table constructed, we will be able to find probability. So the first thing we'd like to find is the probability of going to conference B. So I'm going to keep this to the side, or up here, as we find some probabilities. Let's try to make this where you can see it real good. All right. So you can see my table. We next want to find the probability of a student going to conference B. The probability of a student going to conference B, we would want to find the total, both male and female. Notice it does not distinguish male or female going to conference B, so we'll use the total value. So our probability would be 55 out of our total of 132 students. A girl, next, a girl going to conference A. So I'll put up here, oops, that should be parentheses. A girl, conference A. So we would want to locate the column and row that has girls in conference A. Notice that that is a value of 32. So 32 divided by 132. That would be our probability, 32 over 132. Next, we are asked to find the probability of a student being a boy going to either conference. So it, that means it, conference A or conference B. So because it does not specify and it actually includes both, we would want to use our total. So the probability, basically, of a boy, since it doesn't matter which conference they attend. So our total was 76 over the total possible, which is 132. It's very important to learn uh, some symbolism with probability. So symbols we use in probability, we've already been using the probability of an event with the probability of the event in parentheses. The other symbol is a symbol that we call intersection, and it means and. So we are looking at the intersection of two events. Next, we want to construct a two-way frequency table for this given data. So read it carefully. It says, Vanessa surveyed her family. Ten of her family owned a flat screen TV, and six of those also owned an iPhone. There are three of her family members that don't have a, a flat screen TV, but do have an iPhone, but her grandfather does not own either one. So 
in determining what headings to use, I thought, well, they either have an iPhone or they don't have an iPhone, and they either have a flat screen or they do not have a flat screen. So in constructing this frequency table, I'm going to use FS to represent flat screen, and then no FS to represent no flat screen. Similarly, I'll come over here and put iPhone and no iPhone. And as you might guess, we of course will need a total column and row. So you can add that on just like that if you like. So it tells us that 10 of her family members owned a flat screen TV. So 10 owned a flat screen. That means 10 total. So we know we want to add it down here. We don't know whether those 10 have a phone or iPhone from that statement. Next, it says six of those also owned an iPhone. So of these six, or of these 10 that had a flat screen, six had an iPhone. We can deduce by taking our total and subtracting six that there were four of her family members that did not have an iPhone, but that did have a flat screen. Next, it says there are three of her family members that don't have a flat screen, but they do have an iPhone. So no flat screen and they do have an iPhone. So our number three will go here in this box. It also says that her grandfather does not have either one. So he is no flat screen and no iPhone. So that's one. So I'm going to circle this one here because we had to do some computation to find that. It's kind of like solving a one-step equation, right? And then find our totals. So three plus one is four. If I add these um, horizontally, 6 plus 3 is 9, 4 plus 1 is 5, 9 plus 5 is 14. And of course, we again want to verify that 9 and 4 make 14, or 9 and 5 rather, add up to 14, and 10 plus 4 is 14. Now that we have that information, we can use it to find some probabilities. So, what we are asked to do next is to find the probability that someone does not own a flat screen. So the probability of no flat screen, and I'll just put this under here, probability of no flat screen is equal to how many did not have a flat screen at all? That was a total of four. So four out of 14. Notice your denominator is always this number here in this box, the total total. Here we go with the probability of someone owning an iPhone. So let's look at iPhone. There are six that had a flat screen and three that did not, but nine total did have an iPhone. So the probability that someone has an iPhone is nine out of 14. So here's this symbol again, intersection, meaning and. So the probability that someone does not own an iPhone and does not own a flat screen, how many did not? That would be one. No flat screen and no iPhone, so that's grandpa. So this probability would be one out of 14. So I hope that tomorrow you are able to construct frequency tables and to be able to find probability from a frequency table. Please come in in the morning if you have any questions. Thanks, guys.